Uh, hello, my name is Milena and I come from Serbia. I'm going to talk about microbial fuel cells with biocathodes. So, I will start by defining two really broad terms. First, bacteria. We all see them, actually we don't see them, we, we call them microorganisms that cause various infections and diseases in our body. We invented antibiotics to stop and to fight with them. But sometimes we also hear that they're really good, they, that they help in our digestion system. So then we know that they're decomposing organic and other kinds of, uh, that they're decomposing matter in nature and that our sur surrounding wouldn't look like it looks like without them. Although they're always followed with bad connotation. The second terms I'm going to describe are ecology, sustainability and renewable energy sources. Well, our balanced planet isn't balanced anymore as it used to be. We have climate change, greenhouse gases, lots of carbon emission and so on. Uh, we are always creating problems and they're artificial and then we are trying to find a solution which is also artificial instead of copying nature and what it gave us. So microbial fuel cells connect bacteria with ecology and renewable energy sources and sustainability. It's um, they present uh, biological electrochemical systems that use bacteria's metabolism for electricity production. So the design of microbial fuel cell would look, look like this. We have two divided chambers, anode chamber and cathode chamber, in which we can find two electrodes that are connected with a wire and chambers are also connected with a salt bridge. Uh, in both of them we have matter. It can be organic, non-organic, basically it can be wastewater or mud or soil, whatever contains enough nutrients so bacteria can survive. Logically we have also bacteria in both of our chambers. In the first one we have bacteria that is helping oxidation of of matter, of compounds found there, and in the second one we have bacteria that is helping reduction of compounds. So oxidation is a process where compounds, uh, compound releases one electron and reduction when it gets one. So that compound, we say it's consisted of molecules and we, molecules are consisted of atoms and atoms are uh, connected with various forces and electrons play a role there. So when they make, when they free one electron they become ions and also in reduction when they get one electron they also uh, become ions. Oxidation and reduction can be compared to exhalation and inhalation. So exhalation is similar to oxidation. We make electron free so we breathe out the air and inhalation is similar to reduction. We get one electron, actually compounds get one electron and we breathe air in. So let's get back to our design. So this is how it looks like and here uh, bacteria is helping uh, breathing out the electron which flows through a wire and it creates electricity and in the second one we have breathing in that uh, electron. So which is uh, making reduction. Here we have example the reduction of uh, nitrates which are uh, which can be dangerous compound for example if found in water but if we uh, do the reduction they become nitrogen which is the basic ingredient of the air we breathe in. So this is how the microbial fuel cell looks, looks like. This is from my research in Petnica Science Center. So I was measuring the voltage between two chambers. You can see salt bridge, wire, anode chamber and uh, cathode chamber. So as I mentioned in the beginning, bacteria are usually followed by bad connotation. But here we can see that they can be used for electricity production. And this system is really sustainable and let's say renewable. Um, this is actually copying what happens in nature. It has been studied in recent, in uh, 
maybe a decade, but it's still not ready for use. For example, you cannot use this for charge your phone or light a bulb, but I believe if the more research is done on this, it can be the energy source of the future.